Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Inkscape creating hair using power strokes. I did this little one-eyed monster as a sample. Of course I didn't record it, but it uses hair done with power strokes that can be easily adjusted. I started with basic shapes, gradients, used the power strokes and a little bit of blur for the shading. Recreating the design, I started with the body, which is a circle. I assign a gradient to the circle, duplicate the circle, set it to multiply and give it a blur for the darker shadow shape behind the eye. The eye itself is another duplicate. This time it's a radial gradient from white to gray. Duplicating again for the iris. I want the eye to be green, so I adjust the colors and keep on duplicating for the highlights. The mouse and the teeth are also circles. I convert them to a path and adjust them with the node tool. I turn the mouse into a clipping group and place the smaller teeth inside. I cut them, select the clipping group in the layer panel and then paste the small teeth inside. I create a separate layer for my shading elements. Again, I'm using circles that I convert into a path. Blur and modify with the node tool for a little bit of light at the top and some rim lights on the side. Lastly, I add another circle, convert it to a path and blur it. It will be the highlight on the teeth, duplicate it and place it on the right side as well. I create new layers for the hair, one layer of hair on top of my body and one layer of hair goes behind the shape. For the hair I start with a straight vertical line using the pen tool. That way I just have two nodes, it's very easy to manipulate with the node tool. And then I add the power stroke pass effect. The line has now become a power stroke. There are three additional nodes that allow me to adjust the width of the stroke. You can add more, but for a simple shape like hair, these three are more than enough. I want the hair to taper at the top and be rather slim at the base. It will stretch if I extend my line, so I move the bottom node and the power stroke adjusts accordingly. I can now go in and scale it create variations and adjust the colors to the color of the body by using the D key and the color picker. I create a bunch of variations now because it's a lot faster than drawing each hair later on. I can just duplicate the whole lot, change them slightly, alter the colors, work with the rotation skewing scaling and it will be hardly noticeable that I'm using the same hairs over and over again. Seeing I'm not working on the body, I lock that one so I don't accidentally select it. I try to build a circle of hairs behind the body to make it look less like a perfect circle, but more like a hairy shape. 
I then take the hair, duplicate it to the front layer. Here I want the ends of the hair to blend in. In order to achieve that, I give them a gradient that fades towards 0% alpha. I then duplicate, flip, move, rotate and place the hair where I need it making small modifications so it does not look like a mirrored copy. I create a few highlights along the lower lip. For some final touches, I add a layer of feature hair. It will be thicker, lighter, more prominent on top of the hair I've already created. I clean out my layers and move the feature hair inside the actual layer. I move the shading layer to the top, that way the shapes will affect the hair underneath. Finally I add a few hairs on top of the eye because at the moment that perfect circle just stands out too much. The advantage of the power stroke is the fact that I can easily change the width by just modifying the nodes. And here I have my finished hairy monster, created in just under 45 minutes using basic shapes, gradients, lines with a power stroke and some blur. Looking at the outline view, you can see that all those shapes are actually vector paths. They can easily be converted and the power strokes will be no longer editable and you get clean vector shapes for each and every hair. If you liked this video and thought it was helpful, please subscribe to my channel, click on the notification button, leave a like and a comment in the section below and let me know what you want to see on my blog or on this channel and I'll see you again soon.